Okay, everyone, welcome. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. Hey, I'm really glad you're here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and you've never been here before on my channel, thanks for coming by. You're at the right place at the right time. And if you've been with me a, a number of years already, or if you're just starting out in the first couple months, this is an extreme beginner's video. And on these videos, I'm always trying to really stress all the fundamentals of watercolor, the basics, the basic nuts and bolts of what we're doing. And this here is a gorgeous uh, landscape painting that you can create just by following along on this video step by step and you'll be able to really put this together with no problem. We cover everything here. We're going to cover how you get that first light wash all the way across the painting. And even before that, we're going to show you how to simply lay out your painting so that you know that you're just going to go across this first quarter up from the bottom. You're going to go across with a land, with a, um, a horizon line and that's going to be your line that you have all your buildings, your church, your buildings, your trees and bushes, and your large tree here, that's going to be your first step, getting that line across there. Once you get that line across there and you sketch in a few ideas, then you're all home free. Then you just figure out, hey, I got to get that first glazing on, and we're going to show you the glazing technique. Light wash over the whole painting. You let that dry 100%. We kind of go over that at nauseum, how you have to let it dry, that first wash of that light colors. You can see the light, beautiful blues and oranges and the light colors of the clouds in the foreground here in the sand and the foreground here. Once that dries 100%, then you're home free. Then the last part of the painting, it's real. You just kind of go through the basic steps of getting your darks on, which is this large tree, the church, the buildings, some bushes, and a couple fence posts, and a little bit of a road leading into the scene, and you have it all. So trust me, you'll be able to create this painting, no problem. It's an extreme beginner's video, which means this is the basics of it. I'm not going to go into too much detail and not try to like, you know, do anything too fancy. This is just the basic nuts and bolts of how to get this landscape painting done, and I think you can do it very successfully, and if you practice it two or three times beyond this one, you'll really lock it in and you'll have a basically a land, you'll have a basic understanding of how to create a landscape painting at any time you want. Okay, so let's get started with this pen pencil sketch next and we'll cover again all the details that you need to get yourself uh, started. If you're just starting out or if you've been here just a few months or so or a little more than that, no worries. We're going to, again, do another beautiful landscape painting so you can kind of practice up on your skills and get yourself going. Okay, so let's get started in just a second. All right, you just saw the finished painting, everybody. I hope you're going to have a fun time here joining along. We're going to have a great time here together. We're going to create this beautiful landscape scene. It's going to be a really fun uh process as we go along you're gonna we're gonna create a big tree like sort of in the foreground in middle distance maybe and then some distant uh, mountains and some distant uh, buildings in the far distance and we'll have a beautiful um sky big sky with clouds and we're gonna have so much fun it's just gonna be a step-by-step -step process follow along if it's your first time here and you've never been to one of my videos before Welcome. You've arrived at the right place at the right time if you want to learn watercolors. This is all about watercolor painting. I cover everything watercolor. And I just wanted to mention that um, on my channel here, uh, if you subscribe on the right-hand side below, you'll stick with us. You'll be with us all the time. You'll always see my new videos coming out week after week, month after month, and year after year. And the most important thing is you're going to be learning the fundamentals of watercolor each week as we... Uh, create our new videos uh, and every month after you know just week after week month after month year after year you're going to learn all the methods and techniques of watercolor just by watching the videos even if you don't want to paint along if you just want to follow along for the first couple months or so just to kind of see what we're doing you'll kind of hear the same methods and techniques as i go the same processes as i go and then you can kind of get the idea of what we're doing and I, I'm hoping you'll go and pick up your paints and your brushes and your paper uh, as soon as possible. But again, if you're just here for the first time, thank you so much. And again, you're at the right place at the right time. Um, I pride myself on covering all the fundamentals of watercolor on my channel. So this means that when you're joining along, you're subscribing on my channel, each, each episode that we do here and we create, it's going to have the fundamentals in each video, whether we're painting this scene, which is a landscape scene, or if we're doing flowers, or if we're doing boats, or a seascape, or if we're doing 
uh, still life paintings or if we're doing portrait painting or figure painting, whatever we're doing, we're covering the fundamentals each time. So you always have to remember that. If you can, you know, kind of follow along and see what's going on on a basic level, the fundamentals of watercolor, of drawing and painting in watercolor, you're going to be fine. You're just going to pick it up automatically by just following along each week as we go. And then, you know, weeks after weeks equal months. And you'll be working with us months after, you know, month after month. And eventually, maybe a year or two later, you're going to have all the fundamentals down and you're going to be creating gorgeous paintings. So I want you to, to join along. And all you have to do is just kind of follow along with what we're doing and you'll be creating beautiful paintings, you know, in, you know, maybe six months or a year. You'll be having great results just because you're following the fundamentals of watercolor. And that's what we're going to show you here each week again. Repetition is the mother of skill. So if you're repeating your um, watching of these videos and repeating practicing the exercises, you're going to just automatically get better at watercolor. So let's get started. You did see the finished watercolor right in the beginning, which I always show in the beginning of my videos, the finished watercolor, so you kind of see what you're going to be aiming for as you start out. And then by the time you're done with this video, you're going to have a basic idea of how to get there. So here we go. First thing we do is we do a preliminary sketch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to divide my painting in four quarters. So you can take your painting and say, let's make it into four quarters. Halfway, three quarters, and one quarter. So you can kind of think of it as, if you're thinking this, you know, thinking of this as like measurements for an inch, if this was a whole inch, this would be a half inch, this would be a quarter inch, this would be three quarters of an inch, and this would be one inch. If you think of it as millimeters or centimeters, you can kind of break it down in that uh, sense too. So it's just a matter of, or you just want to break it down like if you're cooking, uh, a quarter cup, a half a cup, three quarters of a cup, and a full cup. That's the measurement scale we're going to use here on this, um, this horizontal position. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just make a quick, we'll take our pencil line, I'll go right around the interior of our tape that we put down. So I put down some artist tape on here just so we have a little bit of a border. We can peel this up and it makes a beautiful border around our painting once we're done. So that's why I do that. So this makes a beautiful border around the painting. And, um, you know, artist tape or uh, drafting tape or a painter's tape. You can use painter's tape. Those, that's the kind of tape you can buy at the local uh, big box stores where they have like all the the paint you buy for your house, if you're going to paint your house and you go in there, you know, you get all those gallons of paint and quarts of paint for your doors and all that good stuff. You can buy, there's tons of painters paint, uh, I mean, painters tape out there right in your big box stores, you know, whether it's Lowe's or Home Depot, wherever it is that you, you know, you buy your paints. If you're painting your house and your interior of your house, you pick up painters tape and they've got the blue tape and the purple and the yellow. Grab any tape that's, blue tape is really good. You can use uh, any of the painter's tapes that they have there, and, and that'll be fine. Or you can use masking tape or uh, artist tape or drafting tape. It all works good, just as long as you get a little small bit of tape around your edge of your paper. So this way, when you're done with your painting, you lift up that tape and it looks beautiful. you got a nice little clean border around your painting. And we'll show you that in just a little while once we're done with our painting. So, okay, the first thing we're going to do is, again, we're going to break this down into quarters. Uh, so we got one quarter, half inch, or half of, uh, um, let's say we're going to use, uh, let's say we're, we're making a cake. So here we're making a cake. Oh, uh, we need a quarter cup, we need a half a cup, we need a three quarters cup, we need a whole cup. There you go, you got your four quarters. First quarter, we're going to do the ground level, the horizon line of our painting. So I'm going to make a nice little line, light line across this painting and this drawing right here. That's the first quarter. That's going to be where the main interesting uh, subject matter we're going to create is kind of residing upon that first quarter. Then the top three quarters, which is one, two, and three quarters, that's going to be the beautiful sky washes. Incidentally, we're going to do the what we call the glazing technique, and you'll hear this a lot on my channel. Usually you'll hear, we'll talk about either you're going to do a painting in the glazing technique, or you're going to use the 
a la prima technique. And a la prima technique is really fun. I use that most of the time, but I do love the glazing technique. And that's what we're going to use here, the glazing technique. So I'm going to show you exactly now how you're going to use the glazing technique with this painting. So the first thing we're going to do is we got that first line here going across. That's our horizon line. You want to call that your horizon line, basically. That's where you're going to see your mountains and all of your main subject matter going across this scene. And then the top three quarters is going to be the sky wash, basically. Okay, so now the second thing we're going to do is we're going to want to create our mountains in the background. So let's do our mountains here. Like this. So we're going to just create some mountains in the distance like that. And then beyond the mountains, wow, or even before, even in front of the mountains, we're going to have a, wow, we're going to have a beautiful church steeple here. We're going to have a beautiful church steeple there. There's going to be a church over here like this. So you're going to make a steeple up here like this, like that. And then over here, you're going to have maybe another building over here. And then you, you're going to go across about three quarters of the way. So again, we're talking, uh, if you want to kind of mention to yourself, like if it's cooking, if many of you cook, I'm sure many of you like to bake and cook. Again, we'll do the same thing. Halfway, half a cup, quarter cup, three quarters of a cup, full cup. So here we'll say quarter cup, half cup, three quarters, and then a one. Here the same thing, quarter, half, three quarters, and one. So let's go about, not quite three quarters, let's go about just shy of three quarters of a cup. We're going to do our tree. Let's do a tree over here. Why does, might as well just have a fun time. Let's do a tree. A nice big old happy tree over here. And we're going to do some light sketching. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do anything particular and anything really fancy. We're just going to get some trunks coming up and like that. So you can kind of see, I'm going to get some trunks going up and then some foliage like this and just some light sketching. We don't want to go too fancy with anything or, you know, get too involved with details. We just want to kind of say, all right, this is our trees over here at about three quarters, a little bit less than three quarters. Let's call this maybe five eighths, but a little bit less than three quarters of an inch or three quarters of a cup. You have your trees over here like that. So we're gonna have some trees and then we'll have some bushes too here and there. So let's make some bushes and trees over here and some more trees over here. So I'm just going to get in rough in some trees and bushes like that. And that's all about we need. Then we can also um, make a beautiful road going this way. And this kind of leads us into the scene like this. And you can even turn that road like this. So you can kind of make it even more interesting. Like that. Wow. How cool is that? A little road going into the scene like that. Beautiful. Okay. We are ready to paint. Can you believe it? We are already ready to paint. We didn't do anything too fancy. We have our pencil sketch completed. Again, we did mostly making sure that we went one quarter up on the paper. So if you're talking like, uh, you know, if we're doing a baking a cake or making a, a meal or making a sauce or anything like that, you would say, oh, how much cups do I need? Well, you need, this is the one cup is the whole page. Well, we need a quarter cup, a quarter cup to get our horizon line, which is our landscape, our very, very like middle distance uh, line across here, which is going to be where our land is that meets the sky. And then our sky is going to be about three quarters of cups, half, three quarters, one cup. So three quarters of a cup is going to be our sky. And then we just divide it again across one quarter, half, three quarters, one cup over here. About three quarters of a cup, a little bit less than three quarters of a cup. We're going to make our tree. We're going to make a big happy tree here right in the middle of the scene. That's going to be the focal point of our painting. 
and then we're going to have some more bushes or some trees and some bushes and some distant mountains and we're going to create all this in a really uh, systematic way doing the glazing technique and again you uh, heard me say right in the beginning we're using the glazing technique and that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to get a light wash over the whole painting first then after that we're going to do our darker washes so you can imagine light washes first let that dry 100 percent and then we go over and do our darker washes which are going to be our mountains and our bushes and our church and our buildings and our trees we're going to do that last after everything dries when we do our first wash that's going to be our sky wash and our ground here in the foreground so let's practice these techniques and remember this is the glazing technique so you're going to see how you take your first wash first thing you do is you get your pencil sketch in second thing you do is you do your light wash which we're going to do next we'll get our whole light very light wash over the whole paper for first let that dry 100 percent and then we go in and we do our darker mountains and buildings and trees and you'll see how it all comes together as we go but again we're having fun the main thing with watercolors have fun <laughs> enjoy it enjoy the watercolor medium have fun there's no race there's no um you know um trying to outdo someone else or anything like that you're just having a good time enjoying it for yourself and you're kind of you know self-edification you're having a good time you're kind of your own best um, competitor you're trying to compete your you know with yourself saying how much can i concentrate on this how much can i practice this if i don't do good on this first try i'm, I'm going to get up and i'm going to try it again and two and three and four times you might want to try this four different times and maybe on that fourth time it's going to look so good you'll be so amazed that just practicing practicing this one painting three or four times each time you do it you're going to get better Always remember, repetition is the mother of skill. I'm going to tell you right now, as a watercolor artist, professional, over 15 years of experience, every time you do something over and over and over again, you just get better and better and better at it. So if you do this painting 10 times, guaranteed the 10th time you do this painting, it's going to probably look 100% better. I'm not telling you that you have to do this 100, you know, 10 times. I know you're interested in other paintings we do too, like watercolor flowers and cool stuff like that. And we do, you know, boats and oceans and seascapes and beach scenes and like things like that. We're going to do that too. You'll see that, you know, each week we're creating new videos. We're always going to do interesting things like that. But the thing I wanted to mention is the more you do something over and over and over again, you will get automatically better at it. So if you did practice this thing 10 times, this one painting, guaranteed, the 10th time you do it, it's going to look like, you know, 10 times better than the first one you do. So don't worry about it. Have fun with it. Enjoy the process. That's the whole thing. It's a journey. The watercolor painting journey is a fun one. You just keep practicing as you go. All right. So let's, uh, enough with the talk. Let's get our paints on the paper next, and then we'll see how it comes all together. All right, we are ready to get started with our first wash, our first glazing. We're doing the glazing technique again. I just wanted to mention that as we go. So um, you'll hear me, usually you'll just hear me talk about two main techniques that I use, the glazing method and the, uh, the a la prima method. So these two methods are basically, um, a, you know, quite a bit different from each other. The glazing technique is basically you're going to be going with a really wet, light light wash of light color nothing too dark over the whole painting and then you let it dry 100 percent of the way then you go back in and you do your darks over top once it's 100 percent dry the a la prima method is different whereas you go in and you start with your darks create your dark washes first which might be your subject matter like your trees and so forth and then you put on your lighter washes when you're kind of like finishing up your painting so the a la prima technique is more or less, and method is kind of like you're starting your painting and just working the whole way through, and you're not really doing any kind of major washes and letting things dry so much. You're just kind of working the whole painting at one time. The glazing technique, again, is different, because, and that's what we're doing here. We're going to do a light wash over the whole painting first, then we'll go in and do our darks over top. And both, both of those techniques and methods are very popular. A lot of professional artists will use both of those techniques. Some use one exclusively or the, or the other. Some will mix and blend 
uh, both of them together as they go, depending on what kind of painting they're doing. That's kind of what I do. I use both. Sometimes I use both together. Sometimes I just use, you know, one or the other. You'll kind of see that as you go along with my videos. I'm hoping you'll stick with me here on my channel and kind of see how we work all of these uh, techniques, uh, techniques and methods. But let's do the glazing technique first. And the first thing I'm going to do with the glazing technique is wet the paper with some fresh clean water. So I have a watercolor bucket of water. It's a container. It's one of those com collapsible tainer containers. This one's by Holbein. So Holbein makes a great collapsible container, water container. And I just have fresh clean water and I just go over the whole painting first with fresh clean water. And I put it down over the whole paper. But I put more water at the top. So the first thing I do is I get the whole paper covered, and I'm using Arches uh, rough paper. Incidentally, that's that's what I'm using. The better the paper you use, the better um, you know. If you use a high quality paper, you're going to get better results. Um, so if you're using less quality paper, you're going to have a more difficult time getting better results. But you have to deal with what you have to deal with. I'm not going to tell you to um, you know go out and buy all expensive paper and the next thing you know, you know, it's frustrating or whatever else, don't worry about it. You buy the best art materials you can for what you can afford and that's that's what you do. Sometimes I wish I could use more fancy paper all the time, but I, I can't. So I try to make do with what I do. But when I do my watercolor videos here on YouTube, I'm always using the best paper I can because this is like, you know, I'm trying to kind of show you the best possible results you can get. Sometimes when I'm practicing, I'm not using really fancy paper. I'm using cheaper paper, you know, just to save a little bit of money. So, okay, so we got the whole paper nice and moist, with covered with fresh, clean water. Not muddy water that's been sitting around for <laughs> two, two weeks or a month. I change my water all the time. I change my water in my water bucket two or three times each painting at least. So remember that you have to have fresh, clean water all the time when you're painting. Otherwise, you're going to get really, you know, muddy looking colors and muddy looking washes. We want to kind of keep things fresh and clean looking. All right, so now you can kind of see my palette here. I put a piece of tape on there so I know where my video camera is filming. And it's right at this line here where the tape is. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to get our sky wash and let's get that in there. Let's start out here. The bottom is blue, purple, blue. So we have our purple and our blues, and then maybe some orange up here. We're going to have a little bit of orange in our sky colors. So you want to have some blue, purple, and orange. Blue, purple, blue, purple, orange. Like that. And if you have blue, purple, and orange for your um, sky wash, you're going to be set. So you can kind of see, I didn't go too fancy here. I might have added four, three blues, one, two, and two, oh, two blues, two blues right there, one, two, purple, three, and the fourth color is the orange, like that. So if you have blue, purple, and orange, you've got your sky colors perfect. Maybe you add a touch of black up here to kind of make that stormy looking cloud that you want to have, like that. Okay. Let's start it out. Let's see how we can do. Let's start out with the orange first. And just put it on the paper. Put some put some orange on there. Don't don't get too fussy. Don't worry about it. Maybe some black. Touch of black, not too much though. And then let's get our blues in there. And uh, our purples. So our blues and our purples. There we go. And then once you get that blue, purple, orange, and black on there, work it on down. Work it on down. There we go. Right down the page. Keep it lighter, though, at the bottom. Like that. But can you see how we did that? And you can make it darker up top here. Purple, purple and blue. Purple and blue, touch of black in there. One, two, 
Wow, look how good that looks. You splash on some water too. Add some water there. Splash some water on there. Just throw it on there like that. Bam. Bam, 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 bam. Have some fun. Have some fun with your watercolors. Do not let your watercolors control you. You control your watercolors. Have some fun. Enjoy it. Grab a tissue out of your tissue supply and then you blot up a few spots too. Maybe you want to add some clouds. Here we go. Happy clouds. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? You just add a couple happy clouds by taking some tissue, folding it up, and just kind of going in there and doing some happy clouds like that. Okay, perfect. Now, <laughs> this is the key. You have to let this dry. I'm also going to lift up with my tissue the bottom of my paper here. There's puddles of water. So that's what you do when you're done putting your sky wash on that flows on down and goes right across the whole foreground too. Take your um, paper towel or your tissue and just blot up the excess water that's flooding down at the bottom of your paper. And then once you do that, you get that all put the puddles all lifted up like that. Now you let it dry. That's it. That's how easy it is. Let this dry. I actually noticed, let me add some orange to the bottom here to the bottom of this painting because that's the ground and that's going to be like some browns and oranges and things like that so let's make our ground just a little bit warmer with some earth colors some you know orangey earth colors like that that looks a little bit better okay and that's basically how we do it maybe i'll add some more orange up here while we let this Maybe I take a damp brush quickly and I blend in some things. You can blend in some colors, but you really have to be careful. You don't have much time, and I always mention this in my videos. When you're working with um, watercolors, you, you can only mix around and, and uh, blend things with your brush and so forth for the first few minutes and then you have to just let it dry 100% and you can't you can't go back in and start um, working and blending things until it dries 100% of the way. So the, again, the key to the glazing technique, as you're seeing here, we're just kind of covering this here. I hope you'll get the main thrust of what we're doing here is the first wash, the first wash you do has to be cover the whole paper and then, you know, you do a little bit of work. Maybe you blot a little bit with your tissue to make a couple clouds, but that's it. Then you got to let it, you got to stop, let it dry 100% until it's 100% dry. And that means you can take a blow dryer and blow dry it off for like five minutes until the paper's completely dry. Or you can come back like two hours later or the next day or a week or two later. It doesn't matter after that. So what I'm saying is you got to let this dry 100% now. You can't go back in and start painting until this is 100% dry. So that means it has to be, basically the paper has to be, you know, dry to the touch so that when you touch it anywhere, there's no moisture at all. It's completely dry. Then you can go back in and we'll do our washes over the top of that. So I'm gonna use my blow dryer over the next five, 10 minutes when I shut my camera off. And when I shut my, you know, when I turn my camera back on again, well, it's gonna be 100% dry because I've used my blow dryer to dry off the whole paper. And then we're ready to go for our last glazing, which is our second wash over the top of this light wash. Okay, so we're going to really have a fun time here finishing up. And um, again, this is the key, though. You have to let this dry 100%. Trust me, if you try going in and painting over the top of wet paper, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be terrible. It's going to, the paint's going to go, whew, it's going to fly everywhere and your results are gonna be horrible. So always remember, once you get that light wash of paint like we just did on top of your paper, has to dry 100%. And again, you can use a blow dryer for five or 10 minutes to dry it all off, or you can wait like two or three hours. It's up to you. It depends if it's really hot out, like if it's a hot day out, you know, and it's really hot, well then it'll dry in like maybe an hour. But if it's like kind of a cool day, it might take two, three hours to dry. So. I use a blow dryer here because I'm making a video and I want to get you the video quickly. So let me get the video out quickly to you in, you know, in the next 20 minutes to a half an hour. 
And then uh, we'll see what happens. But again, this has to dry 100% of the way. You cannot bypass that situation. All right, let's be, let's be clear about that. This first wash, that's light, that light wash of wash you see there has to be 100% dry. And I know many of you have tried this technique before and you said, yeah, Chris, you're right. I've tried it before and it doesn't work. If I go back in when it's damp or wet, it makes a mess. So don't make a mess. Don't stress. Let it dry and you will be happy by and by. Okay. All right. So we'll be right back. All right, everyone, I just was covering up my paint as I was blow drying my paper so that I don't blow dry my paint and dry that out. I wanted to keep my paints moist as we're painting and doing our final washes. So let's again, we mentioned we want to make sure this is 100% dry and you can kind of see I can rub my hand across this here and it's all 100% dry. There's no buckles in the paper too. This is a gummed watercolor block. Uh, sometimes I don't mention that, but this, when you use a gummed watercolor block, which looks like this basically, it's a block of paper that's all glued together, the pages, you know, the paper itself. So it's all glued together, all the pages. So what happens is when you wet the paper, it all buckles up and it, it you know, kind of it has like a buckling effect where, you know, when you're wetting the paper for your first wash, your first glazing, everything gets all, the paper gets all buckled like this. But then when you let it dry 100%, it becomes flat again and it come, becomes just like it was when you first started, which is no buckles at all, completely flat. So that's how you want to go back in. When you're going to go back in and do your secondary glazing, your secondary wash, your paper is going to want to be exactly flat uh, like this. So there's no buckles like this. And that's exactly what we have here. And that's perfect. And incidentally, the first thing I, I used, my first wash, what I used was a, a 5 8 inch uh, wash brush, which is by Princeton Art and Brush Company. You can find these brushes. And you can see that's, a, that's like a, a basically a square brush or a flat brush like that. And it's a 5 8 inch wide brush. You know, you can use a little larger, a little smaller, but that's what I use for my first wash, for that first glazing. And then after that, we're just going to use our standard brush that we, that came with our um, Prang Oval 16 set. So we're using a Prang Oval 16 set. I mentioned to everyone that this is the Extreme Beginners paint, uh, paint set, the Prang Oval 16. This is what it looks like. There's also different variations on this palette. It's there's there's like a version. I think you can get like square, um, the uh, square um, pans that are in this here. But this is the semi moist watercolors by Prang. It's called the Oval 16. You can get this uh, you know anywhere in art stores or online. Inexpensive when you're first starting out, and it works just perfect. You don't need much more than that when you're first starting. Then eventually you'll purchase some, you know, tube paints and you'll get a better palette maybe or whatever else, but don't worry about it. When you're first starting out, you have plenty of time to just use your Oval 16 set like we have here. You get some watercolor paper and you're good to go. You get this brush here with this set. The Oval 16, Prang Oval 16 comes with a beautiful brush like this. So you have everything you need when you get your Prang set and a little bit of paper. So now let's let's get our second glazing on top of this first glazing, which is our light wash. And then now we're doing our darker washes over top. So the next step here is all right. Let's start mixing our secondary washes. So I'm going to use green and brown to make an olivey green type of wash. I want to have an olive green um, with maybe a touch of orange and red for my trees. Okay, so now when I get my olive green going here, which is brown, brown, green, dark green, light green, brown, a little bit of orange, a little bit of red, you get a nice olive green there like that. You can kind of see that's a gorgeous green right there. And then you take your brush 
you might even want to take a little bit of the paint off the brush, so I usually do this. I load up the brush with a lot of paint like that. Not too much water, very little water. Almost no, almost just a damp brush and your paint. And I spritz this paint first with a Holbein spritzer bottle. So I spritz my paints first before I start painting with a Holbein spritzer bottle. And then I use no water and I just use a damp brush and I mix my color like that. Then I take a little bit of a tissue or, um, you know, uh, sponge or I could also use a um, tissue or sponge or a paper towel and I dry off a little bit of that paint off the brush because I don't want to go with too much paint. So I dry off a little bit of the brush. And then I just do a little bit of um, scrubbing with the brush on the side here. You can kind of see how I'm holding my brush like this. So I'm not holding my brush like a pen or a pencil. I'm taking my brush and holding it like this so that my brush is actually level with the paper like this. And then I just want to do some scrubbing like this and see how I can, what I can do there. Wow, look at how good that looks. I go back in like this. And if you can imagine, you just do a few of those little bits of... like that couple of little spots of color like so and you're in business you are good to go you don't have to worry about anything else you have it right there then you can go in grab this maybe you grab a touch of black like that just a touch of black maybe a little bit of red like that a little bit of red mix in a little bit of red a touch of black just to get a little darker do the same thing again, dry off the paint a little bit with your brush. And then you want to start to get your uh, your, your uh, trunks of your trees in. Now the key is to dry off some of that paint with your um, tissue or paper towel or sponge, as you can see me doing here, so that you don't have too much paint flooding on, because you want to have a little, a little, just a touch of, a little bit of paint on your brush. You don't want to have a lot of paint on your brush here. You almost want to have like a dry brush with a tiny bit of paint on there. And then you can get those tiny little bits of paint there that go with the trunks of the trees, like that. See that? How I'm just using a very, very dry brush, like so. And you can see how I'm doing that. Kind of flicking the... Again, drying off the brush a little bit. And then you can do that and then just do a couple. Like that. And there we go, that's good enough. See how fun that is? Have fun with your watercolors, don't let it get to you. I dry off my brush again, same thing as I was doing before and then I'm gonna do a little bit of the same thing here. We, we have some trees over here too. So we have a big happy tree here and then we want another little happy tree over here. Like that. And then maybe a couple little happy bushes and trees over here too. Like that. And you can just kind of make sure you don't add too much paint there. Kind of keep it Okay, there we go. Look how good that looks. And then we're going to do some more of the same over here. Then I'm going to level out this here with the wash. Now here you can use a little more straight paint. You don't have to really dry off your brush too much on this part, but then over here you might want to dry off a little more over here. Like that. So you know. You have to adjust. You're the you're the artist. You have to figure out how much paint. That's a big part of watercolor uh, art is how much paint do you want on your brush? How much water do you want on your brush? How much paint do you want to have in your brush? And
and I kind of give myself that little bit of that horizon line. We we talked about that. The quarter the quarter of the way up the page is your horizon line, so that's going to be where you have your line all the way across like so. And you can kind of see how we've done a really good job of that. Now you can actually add some blue and purple over here. Blue, purple, maybe some brown to that. Purple, blue, brown, touch of black, dry off the brush, and maybe a little bit of red too. And brown. So I'm just trying to get a little bit of a darker wash in here too. And I dry off a little bit of that color like that. And then we have our church steeple like that. Look how good that looks. So we got a building over here, a church, a gorgeous church. And then maybe we have another building over here. Like that. So you can make the bottom dark and the top of the roof light. You can also lift up a little bit of paint with your tissue sometimes. So sometimes your tissue can be a great ally you might have to sometimes take a new tissue because if this tissue gets too full of paint like this you got to throw it to the side throw it out take your new tissue that's no paint on it and then you can use it and you can blot up paint like that and you can actually make some corrections with your tissue and uh, you know do things like that so we are really coming along beautifully here we have our dark darks uh, maybe I'll do some splashing here, so you'll see me do splashing once in a while, and that's what I'm going to do here, just around this tree, and then maybe another couple spots over here too. So I'll come over here and do a couple splashes, and a couple over here too, and a couple in the foreground, like that, like that, just a few, you can blot up a little bit. I like to do some splashes over here and there. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to add some purple to make our distant mountains. So I'm going to do purple with a little bit of that leftover orange. And then you can see, look at how good that looks. We're going to do some of that purple right there. And that's that distant, beautiful purple mountains. Doesn't that look great? Look at how good that looks. Our distant purple mountains. Maybe that's blue there. I'm going to add some blue, maybe some brown and dark. Okay, so that's that there, and again you can take your paper towel or your tissue. Maybe I want to make this roof a little bit lighter on this church so I can go in and lift up like that. Okay, and then we can take this and we're going to do that road that we were looking at before. Wow, just kind of I'm just really f letting this flow right on the paper, just taking some of that light wash that we had here, which is the orange and the purple, like this. Doesn't that look good? We have that beautiful road going in like this. Look how good that looks, wow. Now, let's do a couple uh, bits of um, 
dark. So let me do this. Let me do this again. Um, take a brush. This is our beautiful Prang Oval 16 brush that comes with the set. I get some darks on there, and then I take it and I dry off a little bit of the darks on a tissue or paper towel, or if you, if you have a sponge too, that works. Dry it off a little bit. Keep a dry brush right now. And then now you're going to do a little bit of maybe some, some fence posts. Maybe we have some fence posts here. You make them really small over here, going in the distance. Like that. Like that. And like so. Couple of them are twisted a little bit and turned like that. There we go. And then maybe we'll take a little bit of our purple and orange that we had before, dry off a little bit of that brush there, and we'll make some maybe some a barbed wire or some or some wire like that. Look how good that looks. And you make some happy wires, and you know a little bit of um, barbed wire for these uh, fence posts. And then in the far distance, you won't see that. Like that. And there we go. This is an Extreme Beginner's beautiful landscape painting. We have a gorgeous tree. We have some other trees and bushes along here or on the, along the horizon line. We have a church. We have um, a, a building. This might be a farm building here. You know, it's your your happy world when you're creating your paintings. You can you can think about what maybe each different building is and each different structure. Um, you know, you can. I'm going to splash a few things on here, but you can kind of see how we've gotten a really good effect here. I'll take some darker wash again, dry off the brush a little bit, so there's not too much paint on there, and then you make the these are a little bit darker. The ones in the foreground here that are closest, you make those darker over here. And they get lighter as they go. Like that. And I've, you know, I'm really hoping you had fun with this painting, that you've enjoyed the process. We kind of showed you right from the start how you're going to begin your painting with your sketch how you're going to kind of lay out and determine where everything is in your painting by sketching out and making your um, hash marks on your um, layout, which would be, you know, we're doing four quarters, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, full, one whole. So that could be cups or quarter inches, or you could do centimeters, millimeters, however you want to do it. But then after that, you're really all set. Once you get everything kind of laid out correctly, then you're fine. And then now as you see, as we peel up this paper, look how good that looks. We have everything all isolated beautifully with um, a border around our painting. And uh, we have our distant trees in the middle distance. You can take a little bit of finger painting here. Like that, you can always take a little bit of finger painting and make some darker darks like that in the front of the trees. But that is really the, the key of everything is the glazing technique is, you know, you get that first light wash on, you let it dry 100%, you blow dry it off, of course, like we did here, or you let it dry overnight or three or four hours, and then you're all set. Then you come over and you do your darkest darks over top, and that's really it. You've got it. That's the key. And there's a lot of professional artists out there that use this technique, the glazing technique. They create their paintings like this, and they're out there, and they're in competitions, and they're winning big awards and all this kind of thing. And... They're using this type of method here because it's a beautiful method. You really can get some great results from it. Light wash first, let it dry 100%. Come back over on the top with your darker darks and you've got a really good punch to it, a really good exciting um, dark and light effect where you're getting that real exciting contrast of the light background with the darker darks, the real powerful darker darks over top. 
that gives you a really exciting painting. So don't un underestimate the glazing technique. A lot of great artists use it nowadays, the professionals of, of uh, the, the time right now, and as well as the old masters too, going back in history, a lot of them use this technique as well too. So, so happy you joined along here again. Thanks so much. Give a thumbs up if you like this video. Thumbs up really helps me. So if you wanna help me out, um, on my channel and you you know you kind of think like hey what can I do to help Chris out here if you give me a thumbs up that's really a big help uh, and if you're leaving comments too that's always a great thing everyone learns from your comments and trust me everyone listens to your comments when you're out there and you're putting comments in the comment section people read it and they learn from it so if you're kind of like out there and you have a lot of experience already and you're on my channel and you've been painting a number of years and you have some good insights put them right into the comment section because a lot of the newer people that are coming up the ranks, they want to learn like some of these tidbits of information that you you have, you have knowledge. Don't let it go to waste. Use it. Put it in the comment section if you have some good input in there. There's no uh, ego uh, battles in the comment section here on my channel. You can, you can kind of talk about whatever you want, your techniques, the way you paint. It's all helpful for everyone. So, again, I always mention, you know, feel free, leave comments in the comment section. Again, if you, you want to help me out, by all rights, you give me a thumbs up. And if, if you're subscribing, that's great. You're going to be following along with me. And the subscribe button's right on the right-hand side below. You subscribe with me. You're going to be following me along week after week and uh, month after month and even year after year. And you're going to be getting better at your watercolors, no doubt. Because we cover, we cover the fundamentals here. And that's what I'm always talking about. Let's cover the fundamentals of watercolor, and this way you can get better and better at your watercolors. That's what you want. You want good results. You don't want, you know, to uh, come to my channel, watch my video, and then you come away scratching your head or you don't understand what I'm talking about. You want to know what I'm doing, what I'm talking about, what I'm teaching, and that's exactly what I'm giving you here. All the details that I can so that you get better and better at your watercolors. So I'm so happy you're here. I'm glad you're here joining along with us all. We're having so much fun here, all of us together. So let's keep the um, fun going, the good times going here, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Okay, bye-bye.